Hello everybody and welcome to our next video in uh, our series on deep learning, uh, PyTorch programming. So today we're going to be talking about backpropagation, which is obviously at the heart of uh, many deep learning algorithms and methodologies. Uh, without backpropagation, uh, training efficiently uh, is not possible for a, a lot of cases. So today we're going to be uh, looking at how PyTorch deals with uh, backpropagation. As usual, we have a a notebook which is uh, publicly available. We're going to be using Google Colab here uh, and uh, we're going to check to make sure that we are on uh, the GPU. Actually, we don't we don't really need to be on the GPU now that I think of it. Uh, but obviously when you're actually training uh, your model, you want to be able to take advantage of the uh, hardware acceleration through uh, the use of GPUs. So let's start uh, looking at how backpropagation works and how PyTorch, what tool set does PyTorch uh, offer us uh, to enable us to use backpropagation. So let's start with uh, importing Torch and then creating a very simple uh, Torch tensor, 4x4, two dimensional. Uh, we'll import Torch and create the tensor. Uh, we're initializing our notebook. Right, uh, shouldn't be long now. Right, we have a four by four matrix of all zeros, uh, and uh, obviously this is on the CPU. We're only going to be using the CPU right now. So we have to keep in mind what the goal uh, is when we, uh, in a deep learning project with uh, PyTorch or any other framework. Uh, we obviously has some have some input data. We're going to pass them through our network, which has some parameters, some weights and biases. Uh, and then at the end, we have a prediction. We also have a ground truth. We know the, what the real answer is supposed to be. Then we want to measure the distance between the prediction and the ground truth, adjust the parameters of our model in order to minimize this distance. We want to have our model make accurate ac uh, predictions as close as possible to the uh, ground truth. And the way we do that is by... Uh, having a loss function, which is measuring the distance between the ground truth and the prediction, uh, calculating the gradient of the loss function with respect to the parameters in our model, and then adjusting the values of those parameters based on that gra gradient, right? So this differentiation here plays an important part. We need to be able to calculate the gradient of some loss function uh, with respect to the parameters of our model. So. Every tensor in PyTorch, in order to enable this, has a requires grad, which uh, is false by default, uh, which means that a regular tensor does not require any gradient. Uh, let's test that out. We have created this x tensor here. We're going to print x dot requires grad flag. See what whether it's true or false, and we see that the result is false. But as we said by default. There is no requires. There is no gradient for uh, tensors. Now uh, we can apply operations to our tensor. So here I have another tensor z equals x plus two. Simple linear operation. Then I can print z. I expect it to be a four by four matrix with values of all two. Uh, and then there is something called a gradient function. Uh, let's look at see what the gradient function is going to be when I create the z. So as we said, z is now a 4 by 4 matrix of 2, but then the gradient function is none. There is no gradient because the requires grad flag was set to uh, false. So let's make sure our tensor does have requires grad, does have gradients, uh, and we'll see what uh, we can do with PyTorch. Let's, we're going to delete x here and start over. And this time we're explicitly going to make requires grad, grad equal uh, true for our x tensor. And then we'll print x here. And as you see, when we print x, it explicitly tells me requires grad is true. Now there is gradient. Now I can start performing operations just as I would in a neural network on my uh, tensor. So x, z equals x plus 2. And uh, as we see already, at the end of this, I have a gradient function here, which is add backward zero type here. So what this gradient function is, as soon as you have requires grad and you start performing operations on the tensor, PyTorch will dynamically create a computational graph, which is keeping track of all the operations that are being applied to the uh, 
the tensor to the data, right? We, we know exactly what operations at any point within the layer or between layers is happening to our data. This way, uh, we can, this will enable us to do auto differentiation. When we want to calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to the input, we know exactly what has happened to this input and we have kept the computational graph which we can walk backwards and calculate the gradients. That's the magic of PyTorch. That's what PyTorch and many other uh, deep learning frameworks nowadays, obviously, uh, are offering us that makes our, uh, this makes our life uh, easier when it comes to uh, deep learning. Instead of writing thousands of lines of code that will calculate the gradients, uh, this is going to do that uh, for you. So if I print a uh, grad function of z, it's going to give me this grad function. So now we know that this computational graph is being created. Let's add more to this. So I had uh, z equals x plus 2. And now let's add another step. z equals z times 5. And then if I uh, print the grad function, now it's uh, multiplication backwards. So it's keeping track. At first I had uh, add. Now I have mol. You see, it's, it's keeping track of the computation that is being applied to it. I can even walk backwards. Uh, I can have the function grad function next functions, which is going to walk backwards through my uh, tree, through this computational graph to get to the uh, previous step. Not that you actually need to do this in the real world, but we're just uh, uh, demonstrating the capabilities of what is possible. And you see that before this mall, there was add backwards. I can exactly see what is happening uh, to my data as it's being passed through uh, whatever model I have written in. PyTorch. So let's see the actual backpropagation here. As I said, we need to have a loss function and the loss function is measuring the distance between the prediction of my model and the ground truth, right? What the correct answer we know is during training. So here I'm going to create a sample GT ground truth. It's going to be uh, torch ones like Z, meaning it's going to be the same, same dimension, a four by four matrix, just like Z. Uh, but it's going to be all ones. So let's make that and print it out. You see, four by four matrix of all uh, ones. Now, the loss function I'm going to hypothetically here create a, a, a mean squared error. Uh, Z minus GT, the distance between uh, the prediction and the ground truth, uh, squared, and then the mean value of that. This is going to be my loss value. Uh, the loss value is going to be a single scalar. It's one number that is telling me how good or how bad my prediction is. How far is it from my ground truth? In this case, it is 81. So uh, with this loss itself, grad, grad function is still building. The computational graph is still being built, right? So I have mean at this point because it was a mean squared error. So uh, as you see, the Computation graph is being built. We're keeping track of what is happening to our data. Now, the best, most interesting thing about PyTorch here is this dot backward function. So I can simply call loss dot backward. And what is happening here is I am walking back through the graph. Automatically, the gradients are being calculated of the loss function with respect to the parameters of my model, in this case, x, my uh, tensor. So if I just print x dot grad, you can see this is how much my model parameters have to change uh, for me to go uh, to get closer. So the prediction next time around in the next batch, in the next step, the prediction will get closer uh, to my uh, ground truth. We can optimize this using gradient descent. Uh, this is something you will uh, learn and use later. But uh, what we're trying to demonstrate here is that how easy it is to do this automatic uh, differentiation of the loss function with respect to the parameters using only a few lines of code and it's very intuitive as well. We'll look at examples of this uh, in the real world uh, later on. I hope you've learned something. Thank you very much.